Hey everybody, it's Professor Kokinos. Welcome to the first lecture in AC 211 Workshop in Business Communications. So think about it. The quality of your communication really reflects on your personal brand image. And it's going to also reflect on your career capabilities and your relationships. In today's world, we're communicating all the time, whether you're using body language, verbal communication, written communication, video communication, um, you're always going to be communicating and that's part of that brand image again. Think of how COVID-19 really changed the way we learn, the way we do business, and in order to future-proof your career, you're going to have to be a professional communicator. So hopefully this course will really highlight that for you and also help you to navigate it. Obviously, from before you even walk into an interview for a job, you need to have a great resume, a great reel, uh, a great portfolio, and those things are also part of the communication. It's got to look professional. Um, it's got to be your brand image. When you get into the job, you're going to have to present a professional image in the communications that you do, whether it's drafting emails, reports, um, uh, conducting meetings, doing a video like this, whatever it is, you're going to have to excel against the competition in communication. So that professional image that you're communicating is like a holistic thing, right? It goes from, you know, what you look like, how you speak, how you write, how you interplay with a team. So all those things go together and employers are looking at these things, those soft skills, uh, time management, team dynamics, leadership, those communication skills are going to be critical to make you stand out. Well, on that road to success, you've already hit the ground running. You're at the right place. You're at FIT, a world-renowned university. You're in my business communications class. And let me tell you, just being a college graduate has this magic number of three. You're three times less likely to be unemployed than someone without a BA. And also, you'll have three times the earning potential. Now, you guys know this better than me. You've got to be able to navigate and negotiate digital communications in today's world. So a lot of businesses rely on digital communications. And without them, they're unlikely to succeed. Once again, you know, I think that AMC is great because you've got all of these team projects. You know, our faculty, we're always giving you guys team projects. In my video production class, you have to work in a team. Um, you have a whole bunch of specialists who are doing all these different tasks and then putting it together for a final video. Um, the economy is changing and the, the landscape in business is changing. So those skills that you have, you might be in a gig kind of economy where you're a freelancer and you're working on different projects for different clients all the time. Or um, even in a business like FIT, a lot of times I'm asked to serve on an ad hoc committee that you know might have one task and once that task is over, um, it's disbanded. But the idea of being versatile and being able to work with different people all the time, I think really gives you that edge. Many businesses today rely on the idea that people will kind of self-manage themselves. So you don't want to be micromanaged. You want to be able to be productive, but on your own terms, as far as your time management, uh, your productivity skills, uh, and then also the idea of cultural uh, understanding business in a global fashion where you understand cultural differences and you're able to navigate and communicate um, with those cultures. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. So communication is a two-way process, right? With the idea of sender and receiver and the message and then feedback. And listening is a critical part of communicating. Sometimes just being quiet and really being mindful of what someone is saying and not thinking about what you want to say and how you're going to interrupt them um, is really what's going to make you an effective communicator. You need to empathize with the person who's speaking and really put yourself in their shoes and listen to what they're trying to get across first. 
you don't want to be the kind of listener who fakes attention and uh, interrupts or what the book calls grandstands, just waiting for your opportunity to get your word in edgewise and cut in. A lot of times you're thinking about what you want to say more than what the other person is saying. So I'm sure you know about body language and things like eye contact, so I'm looking right at you now, right? If I start talking to you like this, I might not be as engaging. So um, it's a holistic thing again. The idea is that your expression, your posture, uh, your eye contact all to come together with the words that you're saying too to enforce that communication and also enforce your goal of that communication. So if I talk to you like this, it might not be as well received as if I talk to you like this. Eye contact is obviously an important thing and you can really get in someone's face sometimes too. Other cultures have different thoughts about it, like you don't want to be kind of rudely staring at somebody. Uh, sometimes it might be a little too intense, but I think that eye contact is a one-on-one -on -one kind of sincerity gesture that you know, you're know you telling the truth, you're uh, telling it as it is, and uh, you know that eye contact, you can also use that eye contact to get feedback from the person you're talking to. I'm missing out on that now because I can't really see you guys. I'm just looking into my webcam. But I could kind of gauge how well my communication is going over by looking at you, looking at me. How many times did your mother tell you, sit up straight, right? So breathe in and really, you know, feel that energy. And the idea is that your posture is also an important part of that communication. Um, you know, you might get in on someone's personal space, as I was saying before, or reel away in disgust, right? And the idea is that you're also kind of adding that to the communication. One of the things I used to do when I went into, like I say, a business meeting, is I would look at the person who was the chair of the meeting. And I would kind of look at what their stance was, what their posture was, how they kind of controlled their environment and the room and try to emulate that. So you can also communicate with the way that you handle your space and time. Let's say someone walks into your office and says, you know, where's the report I asked you for? Well, I didn't get to it yet, it's late, I've been doing this, and plus your office is a mess. Papers are strewn all over the place, you look unorganized and disheveled. How does that communicate your brand image? So in advertising, a lot of times we say, you know, packaging is everything. So the idea of, you know, again, your personal appearance, your grooming, your attire, um, sends a message about who you are and your status. Uh, a document has the same thing, the way it's laid out. I look at a resume and I see a typo, and right away I think this person is not really right for the job because if they're not meticulous enough to proofread their own resume before they give it to me, how can I depend on them to come through with an important annual report? So this semester I'm teaching in the Global Marketing Communications Program at FIT. I'm teaching a video production class that has uh, half the students from Paris and half the students from FIT. And it's really exciting to work in different cultures. So the idea is to really understand that culture and uh, you know, how to communicate within that culture. And obviously with you know, globalization and global marketing, you really need to have those skills. And sometimes you got to do your homework. Um, you got to research what works in a certain culture. Um, a lot of times, you know, gesturing or uh, certain types of communication mean different things in different cultures. Here's a famous example that I always like to talk about: the Chevy Nova. So why didn't it sell well in Latin America? Well, Nova, of course, means doesn't go. You really don't want a car that's called a doesn't go, do you? So a lot of this stuff can be common sense, you know, when you're communicating, whether it's cross-cultural or intercultural, um, 
you want to make sure that you are using the kind of language that someone understands. So a lot of times I'll tell people, you know, uh, in a complex presentation, think about it like, you know, you're telling it to a 10 year old and how you're going to bring that down and make it so understandable and speak slowly and enunciate clearly. Open your mouth and move your lips. People are actually lip reading too to help understand what you're saying. Uh, encourage feedback. Ask questions. Uh, stop, you know, periodically and ask, are there any questions? Did you understand that? Check for comprehension. Observe those feedback messages. Is someone looking at their phone while you're talking or they're not making eye contact? Um, listen carefully, right? The idea of listening as an active listener, um, using your expressions to reinforce what you're saying. And then also a follow-up in writing is always a good way to understand that your message has been well received. FIT is a great place for diversity and inclusion. And I think that that diversity and inclusion goes across all kinds of businesses too. You need to have a diverse team to understand how to communicate to a diverse world, a diverse world of consumers, uh, internally, other businesses, um, the idea of that strength in diversity. So let me leave you with this thought, the idea of studying abroad. What better way to understand cross-cultural communication than to actually travel and interact and study abroad? FIT has great programs. AMC has three excellent programs where you can study in London, Paris, and Shanghai. In London, the internship not only puts you in a position to study, but also to work in an actual business environment as an intern and learn that cross-cultural business communication firsthand. So I hope you enjoyed the first lecture and keep up the good work. Uh, let me know if you have any questions at all. I'm going to post some interesting assignments for you. Uh, and uh, again, let me know if you have any questions.